Hi folks, thanks for tuning in and welcome back. Winter is here and I thought I'd take a little bit of time to share a very nice wool coat with you all. And what you're looking at here is the Mackinac Cruiser by Filson. It's an iconic coat. Very, very high quality. Well made and it's the kind of coat that you can pass down. It's going to last for many years so long as you take care of it, of course but it does have an heirloom quality to it and this one is one that I picked up a couple of years ago in Minnesota they have a store there and when I went to the store they only had two of these coats in my size one was in green and the other one was in a charcoal gray that you see here and I decided to go with the darker color now as far as fit this one here is the Alaska fit, which is a little bit roomier in the arms and the shoulders. And they also make this coat in a Seattle fit, which is a little more slender. And that one didn't work out for me. I could see that if I were driving, um, there was less room in the shoulders and it was noticeable. And I decided to go with this one. It's a little more comfortable. Now I've been told by the people of Filson that they are going to be doing away with these two distinctions and they're simply going to offer the coat in standard sizes going forward. I'm not sure when that's going to take effect but I, I'm starting to see a lot of small, medium, large and extra large on their website and some of the numbered sizes are starting to disappear. Now I'll say another thing about this coat when I purchased this coat, um, it wasn't available with a, with a lining inside. And there's a new one out that came out last year. It's called the Mac Tin Cruiser. And it has tin cloth on the shoulders and the arms. And it is lined inside. And I think that coat is nicer and a little bit warmer and perhaps a little more heavy duty and I wish that one was available at the time I had purchased this one I probably would have um, opted for that model instead but nonetheless this is a very nice coat heirloom quality no doubt about it what I'll do is I'll talk about some of the features I'll break it down I'll share how I like to layer it or some of the things I pair it with and then I'll do a little bit of a write up online for those that may be interested in these type of uh, wool garments so let's get started here. As far as the closure for the front of the jacket, it is a button closure. And as you can see right there, you get six buttons. In my opinion, I think these buttons could have been a little bit larger. And they're a little bit on the small side. I think they could have made them a little bit bigger and easier to handle, especially for a coat. These these buttons probably would be nice on a jack shirt or something like that but for a coat of this magnitude I would prefer beefier a little bit bigger buttons for it but nonetheless you get six six buttons in the front to close the jacket and there you can see all the way up to the collar now as far as the wool this is a 24 ounce virgin wool and this is a charcoal gray like I said as far as the color when I purchased this one they did come in numbered sizes so I was lucky I was able to dial in uh, the coat and get the perfect fit and I only had to choose between this one and a green and I really like their navy color but um, that one was not in my size so I decided to go with this one I'm uh, very pleased with it and I really don't have any complaints. Now as far as pockets, you get four flat pockets in the front. And this top one here also has a patch pocket with slots in it for pens or perhaps a ruler, small rulers or a small instrument you could put in here. And I just keep a pen and a small uh, flashlight in mine it seems to work and there's a pocket behind it for some additional items so sufficient storage these pockets are big enough to hold a large cell phone and a snapshot 
Now it also has behind here hand warmer pockets, if you can see that. And you get two of them, one on each side. And there you go. So that takes care of keeping your hands warm as you're walking, perhaps standing, waiting for a train or something. And it does have adjustable cuffs, two buttons. So that's nice. If you wanted to snug that up around your gloves a little bit more, you could. Gives you the option of doing that. It does have an interior pocket, utility pocket right here, and it has a spare button. In case you pop a button, you have a spare right here that comes with it. And this pocket is pretty roomy. And here's a standard size wallet. And as you can see, it fits in there and none of it sticks out and it's easy to retract. And I'll show you how some cell phones fit in here. This is a Samsung standard size phone and that drops in there rather well. I would say maybe three quarters of an inch is sticking out or so. Not too bad. And this is an Apple phone here. I believe this is the 6S Plus. So this is a little bit bigger phone. And that fits in there as well. And I would say about two inches is sticking out. So gives you an idea. If you wanted to carry your phone in there, you can obviously carry it in these pockets and it would be more secure. But some folks like to carry it in a breast pocket. It's a little more convenient and you have the option of doing that as well. Now, it, it has some, it has a large uh, pocket in the back, and I'll share that with you all. Let me just lay it here where you can see it, and there we go. And this was really designed to carry maps for surveyors and things like that, but obviously you can carry whatever you want in it. And it's a pass-through and it goes all the way to the other side rather large takes up the whole back and what I like to carry in it is an extra scarf some leather gloves it's perfect for that and perhaps a wool hat a little watch cap or something like that throw it back there if it gets brisk and cold reach around pull those items out and use them to layer up. So very handy for that. And I'll spin it back around, give you a shot of the collar. And there you go. I think the collar on this could have been a little higher in my opinion, similar to the um, to the Woolrich jacket, which has a thicker, higher collar, which is nice to pop up on a windy day to keep the wind off the back of your neck. So, code hook right here to hang it from. Although I wouldn't recommend using this, I prefer to hang my coats like that. My experience over the years is that these tend to rip out and break, so. Now, as far as As far as some of the pros to this coat, it's very breathable, that's for sure. It breathes very nicely and allows some of that heat to dissipate and move away from the body, some of that moisture. And I think that's very positive, um, especially if you're active and moving around. Um, it does offer some light water repellency, very modest. Uh, the water will run off on a light rain. I wouldn't want to wear this in a downpour. Eventually it'll get heavy. It'll start absorbing water. And although it's going to retain some of the insulating properties, it's still going to be like wearing a wet blanket. And that's not going to be very comfortable. 
Um, some cons. Some folks are going to think that this coat is expensive, and it is. Um, and it is not wind resistant, that's for sure. Um, I had it on last weekend, and I was going over a bridge, and the wind was blowing, and I could feel the wind going right through it. And actually uh, making it, you know, to my chest. So, so that's another issue. It's not going to stop the wind. Now it does have two layers in the back, so it's going to be a little more wind resistant in the back than it is in the front. So those are some of the pros and cons associated with this coat. Now, as far as possible improvements, as I previously mentioned, I think it could have had a wider collar or a higher one to give you a little more real estate and some additional coverage around the neck. I think that would be really nice. Perhaps a hood attachment in the back. Many of their coats have hood attachments. This does not. And they could sell an optional hood. If you're going to a ball game or you have to sit somewhere for a prolonged period, it's nice to have a hood, keep that wind off you and retain some of that body heat. That would be a nice option. And the last thing I would say is that it would be nice if the collar and the inside of this coat was lined perhaps with a moleskin. And that would give you some pretty robust wind protection and it would also add to the comfort of the jacket. So those are some possible improvements that I think would make this coat a little bit better. Obviously it's going to make it more expensive as well. But I wanted to take a little bit of time to share this uh, this beauty with you. I also have their cape coat. Um, that one's a little bit different. Um, it's not going to be as warm as this jacket, but it's uh, it's a very nice coat for casual wear nonetheless. So what I'll do now is I will take a pause right here, and then I'm going to show you some of the other pieces I might want to wear this coat for everyday wear let's say in temperatures between 25 and 35 degrees Fahrenheit. So, stand by please. Okay, I have the pieces laid out and I also have some EDC items. So what I'll do is I'll go around once. I'm also going to do a write-up in the description section. But I previously indicated that the cruiser was not windproof and to mitigate that I would wear a moleskin shirt and this shirt here is the Seattle moleskin shirt and it's very nice for fighting off wind it's comfortable it's nice and soft and I would layer this shirt with this long sleeve merino wool shirt and what you're looking at here is a an Alaskan lightweight crew top shirt and it's very nice it's merino wool Obviously, it's going to wick moisture, dry very quickly, but these two garments pieced together is a very nice combination with this jacket for cold conditions. Now, my preferred pants would be these pants here. They're pretty heavy-duty pants. They're nice and thick. They're not insulated, but they're, they're nice and thick, and if I wanted some additional insulation, I would simply wear some long underwear with them. But this is a pair of Fennymore twill pants. And I would pair the pants up with a custom belt. This is a double thick custom belt here. It's leather and it has a brass roller buckle. And it sits very stiff on the waist. And it's ideal for carrying a firearm. Uh, it's not going to roll or bend or anything like that. And I will get a very consistent draw. So that's my preferred option with respect to carrying a firearm. If I'm not carrying a firearm, I'll simply just wear a regular Filson belt, the standard uh, one and a quarter inch belt as opposed to this one and a half here. Now, as far as footwear, this is a pair of Johnson & Murphy uh, casual dress boots. And I can pair them up with some lightweight merino wool socks that are on top. And if it's really cold, I may bump the socks up to a medium weight. But generally speaking, I just wear a light sock as I'm walking and my feet tend to sweat. As far as additional accessories, 
for my cargo pouch in the back of the cruiser. I may carry a scarf here and I'll keep that in the back but if the weather turns brisk I have an additional item to layer with and this is a Filson scarf. It is 72 inches long and 12 inches wide so it's pretty sizable and right here to keep the hands warm is a pair of goatskin gloves. These are the lined version by Filson and I will carry the scarf and the gloves in the cargo pouch and utilize them if I need them. As far as headwear, this is a very nice sky piece. It is a Tilly Tech Wool hat and it complements the garment very very nicely. It matches and what I like about this hat is it's lightweight. It's going to keep the snow off my head and if it gets really cold it has internal ear flaps that I can pull down to give me some protection around the ears. So very nice hat, the Tilly Tech Wool hat. Now over on the right side I just have some EDC items, the usual suspects, my wallet with my credentials, a smartphone, a Sebenza 21, that is the smaller version, small flat lighter, this is one of those helos, and it's a windproof, waterproof lighter. As far as a sidearm, very nice firearm there, that's an HK P30 subcompact with an extra magazine with some premium ammunition and we have a very nice fixed blade here inside this pocket sheath and a tiny little lightweight titanium flashlight so these are the items and I can use them to either dress up the garment dress it down and for cold conditions this is how I would be rolling um, in temperatures like I said between 25 and 35 degrees or so. So thanks for tuning in. I wanted to share these components with you. Have a nice weekend and see you all next time.